much for clicking on this video. Clarissa Gonzalez, your request about transitioning into semi-hydro. Thank you very much. I have a candidate here that is sort of ideal. We're gonna have to use a little bit of our imagination at some point because obviously this one has already been adapted and grown in self-watering LECA semi-hydro. But when it comes to transferring any orchid, whether it's from bark to another media or bark to bark, the indications are always the same and timing is everything. So what we're looking at here is my Cattleya Moscom and uh, she has grown gorgeous growth this year and is now growing roots. And when I say timing is everything with regards to repotting, no matter what media you're doing or whatever it's coming from, whether you're taking it from old media into fresh media or into organic as, and then inorganic, the timing is fundamental. And I will always go back to saying it's basically when the roots grow. Now, I'm gonna put you on a tripod and then I will expand that thought process. So when the roots grow, and when I say timing is everything, this is now the first week of November. And normally we think of repotting in terms of spring. Well, that's not always ideal because if the orchid is not growing roots, unless it's an absolute emergency repot, then there's no point of repotting simply because our calendar says spring. The timing is based on what the orchid does and then it's up to us to make sure that we can give it as easy of a transition based on temperatures and our growing method. And I'm saying that quite hesitantly because I don't know your growing conditions. So I'm going to just try and be as global about this repot as I can be without confusing the issue of transitioning and an already transitioned orchid. When you transition an orchid or repot an orchid at any given point in time, preferably with roots growing, regardless of the time of year. A soak with a good, strong nutrient solution, in my case, it's 300 ppm, including seaweed at the pH of the media that the orchid has arrived in, is currently growing in. So if you are growing already in an organic media, your pH that you're putting in the pot might be higher in order for the orchid to absorb the nutrients of the calcium, the magnesium, and the seaweed, the hormones. So make sure that your pH is correct. Otherwise, the soaking has no effect whatsoever. Normally, I go with a margin of in between 5.8 and 6.3 when I transition an orchid or I repot an orchid and do a pre-soak. So in this case, I have a 5.8 solution in here simply because my media has a higher pH rate. When it comes from organic media, you might want to also consider a higher pH going in the pot in order to somehow balance and counteract what is happening in the pot so that your orchid and the roots that are in there can actually absorb the nutrients you're trying to give it. In that case, I would always try and do a roundabout version of 6.3, because then whatever happens in the pot, it will drop down because of the media being organic, more acidic, and it will drop the pH a little further. So that is my recommendation. If you're in organic media and you want to transition to inorganic media, soak the orchid at a 6.3 pH in order for the nutrients to actually get locked in and absorbed by the orchid. This is where I'm asking for your imagination that this is organic media because what I'm doing is no different to what I would do if I got an orchid in that was in bark, and in my case, that's always the case before I take it over into leka or lava rock or ceramus, inorganic media in general. I always soak it before, and I preferably wait to see if roots will grow. 
You have to be aware of what is happening in your pot, whether you need to do it sooner rather than later. If you can wait, I highly recommend you wait for signs of activity. It's your backup plan in case the orchid will dump the old roots and not adapt to the new media. I will link below a video I did of my Dawiana repot that I got new, the Dawiana aurea. And in that video, it goes from bark into leka, and I give more reasons why I've made the decision at this point in time, as opposed to waiting for the roots. So I'll link that down below in case you're interested to see it. In this case, the Moscomb, it is now first week of November. It is very, very against anything that makes sense to me to be repotting at this point in time. But I am not waiting for a calendar date. I'm seeing what the orchid is doing and I shall be treating it then a little bit more cautiously. Right now it's still living outside. My temperatures are still mild. And we have another, no, it's not that pot now. But this, now that it's re going to go through this repot, I am going to bring it inside where my temperatures are a little bit more stable. The same would apply if you're going from taking an orchid that was in organic media and want to transition it. You want to be a little bit more careful as to where the location of the orchid is. It needs good light in order to photosynthesize, create sugars and grow. And it needs a steady temperature regardless of what the culture says. If it's a cold growing orchid, make sure it's a cold growing steady temperature. The fluctuations are small little stress signals to the orchid and it won't apply energy into what it's supposed to continue to do, which is roots, or new growths and roots. And I would not worry about whether the orchid is in sheath. You can see that mine is in sheath, and I'm doing it anyway. It's the roots that are for me the trigger. Something needs to be done. So I always go against where the roots are and try and get the media out away from the root tips. Now, in my case, this orchid has been in this pot two and a half, almost three years. But it matters not whether you're transitioning or repotting. So take this example, not because I've already got an orchid established. This is perfect regardless of what media you are growing in. Because even in the case of an established orchid, there will be root loss based on the fact that that is what orchids do. No matter how much you think you've got it nailed down regarding the culture, the growth, etc., orchids will dump roots on occasion. It has nothing to do with the growing method. Now, in my case, I'm not surprised about the root loss here because this is a combination of Basically, two years in a pot, a cattleya will dump roots. I'm not concerned, it's what they do. However, what I do want to do is try and see, although I have lots of leka, I like the fact the leka is clean. That makes it a little bit more easier because if the roots can rot in any pot, it can always be a little bit of a problem. I have a microfiber growing around the bottom here, so I'm just going to See if I can remove that, because that root is really good. I would like to preserve it. And if you are transitioning an orchid, you want to preserve every single root there is to the best of the ability, knowing full well that it might fail anyway. But for the time being, until the new roots grow down into the media, Every root is precious. Once you have the orchid established in the new setup and you need to do a repot and your roots are okay, then you can be a little bit more radical and not need to be 
so selective with the roots and all you're doing is maintaining the health of the root ball. But in this case, I have quite a few dead roots and I have quite a few good ones. And I will be definitely hedging my bets on the new roots that are growing, which should be always the case, whether you're growing from organic to inorganic. Now there are certain little things that one can do to help the orchid along in the transition phase. In this case, I have very large fleshy roots. So my media, inorganic media, is large lecker. In the case of thin roots, the small roots like an oncidium, if we one were to look at maybe an oncidium like a, a twinkle or something like that, some oncidiums have roots this size. My Colmenara Masai Red has big chunky roots. But any small rooted orchids would require, just like with organic media, a smaller kind of media. So if you have pebbles, in this case Lekka, then it's always a good idea to take the time to actually pick out the smallest of your Lekka pebbles for the transitioning ease of the orchid and pot only with the smallest. It is a signal to the orchid that there is enough media around the roots to keep it moist, hydrated, wet, whatever you want to call it. And I would always do the, exactly the same if, for example, I will link another video down below about my repot of the Phalaenopsis, a summer bloomer. We know that summer bloomers always come in sphagnum moss, at least here in Europe. Again, Clarissa, I don't know where you are, but at least here in Europe. And sphagnum moss is very, very water retentive. So it needs a water retentive media for like summer bloomers. And you need to replicate, in this case, if you're transitioning, you need to replicate the environment of what the orchid is accustomed to and trying to do that with inorganic media. So if you're transitioning a summer fowl, for example, that came in sphagnum moss, and you're not in the video I'm going to link because mine is already established, but you want to replicate how wet sphagnum moss can get. Again, despite the roots being big and chunky and fleshy, you will need to make sure that you have the smallest of the lecker or the smallest of lava rock, whichever media you're going to transition it to in order to replicate the high moisture ret retention inside the pot. That is what the inorganic transition is all about. You're replicating what the orchid is accustomed to. So there are some exceptions with the chunky roots needing larger lecker. A big factor and a big hint is how the orchid arrived and what it is that you want to transition it to. So if it arrived in sphagnum moss, you can hedge your bets. It needs a lot of water and smaller media, smaller lecker will do exactly that for you. Small will always retain much more water than the larger ones. And then of course, as with any repot, nothing different here remove all the dead roots, all of them, as best to, as possible. If you have, as in my case, for example, here, let's just pretend this is bark, and you have good roots hanging on to bark. Let's pretend this is bark. Leave them there. Leave the roots with the bark attached. Don't worry about removing it. There is no need. The climate of the pot as you transition will not change because there's three or four pieces of bark in there. With this kind of setup, there's a lot of flushing in the transition phases as well. So what I will do is also link a video when I was talking about ceramus. Again, I don't know where you are, but I was talking about ceramus and it is 
In the beginning, there's so much flushing going on, no matter what time of year, at least three times a week. In a transition phase of an orchid, the pots need to be flushed through in order to create the oxygen exchange inside the pot. It is that that is actually the biggest and most important factor within a pot is oxygen ex exchange, be it in transition or while the orchid is growing. It matters not. So a small little piece of bark, four little pieces of bark, what you're trying to protect here is the root system. That is important. You're not worried about leaving too much organic media in the pot because the flushing will take care of everything. And normally it's best practice as well, after two months, to go and check the orchid, take it out of the pot and check which roots have failed, depending on time of year. I wouldn't do it during the winter. If I am doing this now and this orchid was embarked and I'm transitioning it, I am not touching it in December, January. I'm gonna wait until such a time that I see the temperatures rising outside and then I'll go and have a look and then I can still and always cut off more of the debris that is now in the pot. It doesn't always have to happen that you lose roots, okay? So it's not like you're always going to lose roots. Some will just take off and it's like there's nothing's happened at all. However, if you do lose roots, the time of year in the transition is best to leave the orchid alone if you're transitioning this time of year, November, even if you're growing indoors, okay? I, I would highly recommend just to leave it be. Now, in my case, I would always say, I would always say, keep the pot the same size as what the orchid came in, unless you have long roots, you don't want to snap them. And in the inorganic growing method, it is not the size of the pot that is of fundamental importance because it is inorganic. For aesthetic reasons, we don't take a massive pot for a small seedling. That's, that just looks silly. But the size of the pot is not important in this case of the transition phase. You want the orchid to be comfortable. You don't want to snap roots trying to quetch them into a small pot. Now, in my case, I could possibly get away with fitting the orchid back into its original pot because you can see I don't have that many roots. But, let's not get too ahead of ourselves, but I don't want to do that because you can see the orchid is already at the edge of the pot with this growth and the next two growths, will, when they come out, it, it's already at the border. So what I'm going to do in this case is give it a new pot and settle it in comfortably in a pot that looks for the root ball to be far too big, but for the size of the orchid, it's not. Now I do have inhibitions about the lack of vigor in this, on this orchid. So that to me has something to do with the parentage. I would not worry about the fact that the growing method was not conducive to what the orchid needs. Sometimes orchids will, because of their parentage, develop a massive amount of a root system that you can hardly control or contain, and others are a little bit more reluctant. I would say, <clears throat> do not be put off that after two years, I've got this root system. For me, this is only because the orchid is a difficult one to grow. I have never gotten her to bloom. And that means the root system is finicky. Nothing to do with a grow method. I only use a support to help me train the orchids if I can't let the light do its thing. And then I can at least attach the new growths if it's getting a little bit out of hand to the support. I don't have the support in there for any other reason. So in this case, I've put in two microfibers. For transitioning an orchid, that is not 
used to inorganic media, if you have like a Phalaenopsis that has the chunky, chunky roots, you can see that it's not much of a water hog because of the material that it came in. And that is when you're transitioning, you can start with one microfiber. I am using two because I'm replicating what the orchid had before. So whatever happens with the orchid one pot to the next in a transition phase, you're going to try and replicate that and you can play with lecker size or any inorganic media size if you're using lava rock, small pieces. And you can also play with how much microfiber you're going to put in or how high you're going to make your reservoir. For an orchid that is transitioning from a lesser moist environment into a higher water retentive environment, it is a good thing as well to start with a reservoir that's a little bit lower and not already drowning it, so to speak, with a very high reservoir. And you can adjust the water level accordingly. Even if your pot is already set for future when it is adjusted and has acclimated, your holes for semi-hydro can be up here, as is the case for my deposit. It's about here, but I can manipulate the, the water reservoir for whatever I want it to do. So in a transition phase, make sure that you see what the media is that your orchid is coming out. Try to replicate that with the organic media you're putting in the pot, and then you can manipulate the water level to adjust even further how much of the water retention is in the media as opposed to not. I'm not sure if I'm making a lot of sense because obviously this orchid is not the perfect example. I'm hoping that we can stretch the mind a little bit and pretend what I'm doing is with bark. And that is why I'm linking the Dawiana video below. And then fill up as per usual, avoiding, let me do it the other way around, avoiding lecker on those root tips. In this case, it's pretty straightforward because there aren't many roots. So the lecker is filling around really nicely without me having to interfere too much. Another thing you want to make sure is that if, for example, you have an orchid that has absolutely no roots for anchoring and only the new roots coming out, it has to be stable and secure. No jiggling of the root tips on any kind of media whatsoever. No abrasions when moving it around to flush it. So that's why the support will also come in handy where you can secure the orchid to that support and keep it stable. In my case, I don't have to jiggle this orchid around because as you see, the root system is very, very open. There's no network going on at all. And everything is filling into the pot quite easily. I just changed the angle. Maybe you can see it better now. You really want to avoid getting any kind of abrasion on the root tips that are growing. So there's another thing that you can also do in the early days of a transition. You can keep the orchid much lower in the pot so that there's more humidity around the base and don't fill her up. You, pot, you can pot it much lower and then eventually you can go in once the roots have gotten hold and take her out of the pot, raise her up to the level that is then normal. That is another way you can manipulate humidity around the roots. And then also with a root system that is not as tightly packed and you don't want to jiggle it around, it's literally then as you come to the top, filling in around gently with Lekka beads that will fit into the gaps so that you're not having to actually move it, shake it, and disturb it even further. In this case, that worked really well. And in any transition case 
for any kind of orchid when it comes to cleaning roots, I can assure you that once you start cleaning the roots out, there are gonna be quite a few gaps that you will see and it makes your life much easier on the repotting. There's also the fact that, remember the bark that can stick to a root tip? They won't affect the environment of the pot whatsoever. So don't be so radical, there's no need, seeing as there is more inorganic going on than organic, and there'll be flushings every third day in order to keep the oxygen flow going inside, as well as flushing out whatever little bits of debris might actually have formed in the days in between. So let's just, let's just have a look-see. And I can be a little bit more radical now with a filling her up because all the gaps are full. In order to avoid a top dry layer, in my case I have one, so I keep repeating this because I don't have access to anything that is non-abrasive for a surface protection. You can either place a microfiber around the top and keep that microfiber moist so that the roots don't have a problem with any kind of dry lecker and getting desiccated because of that. Or you can put a little blanket of sphagnum moss around it while the roots go in. In some cases, now you could actually leave the orchid as it is for the roots to actually become longer and not worry about desiccating the root tips. You can leave this hollow open and fill it up once the roots are almost touching the next leka, and then you fill up around them and that way you've got the roots in the pot and they don't have to be searching anyway. Roots will automatically go towards humidity. Not all roots are perpetual climbers. So in this case, if I was transitioning her, I would leave the hollow. I would put a microfiber across the top and have the roots go down and then fill up around. But seeing as she is used to this environment, I'm going to go all the way, fill her up, and already have those roots in the media. And yes, it looks a little bit tedious in the beginning, but trust me, it's only in the beginning. Semi-hydro, self-watering, inorganic growing, there's a bigger workload in this method at the beginning. And when I say beginning, I say approximately seven to 10 months, because that also depends what time of year you're doing what you have to do with the orchid. I wouldn't be guessing such a long time frame in the definition of beginning if this were now April, May. Because as we know, everything just grows much better and faster in warmer temperatures. But 10 months is your margin of a transition. And that is where the workload is a little bit higher than anybody would actually imagine. So what I'm doing now, because of the root tips being so close to the surface, even though she appears stable in the pot, I'm just giving myself a little bit of insurance here and securing the back just a little bit to help me out and making sure that the pot, when I flush, it doesn't jiggle too much. I am sorry if I sound distracted. I have some background noise that is a little bit irritating, to be honest. And I do apologize, but I think, I think I've covered all the points in trying to do a repot that is actually for organic to inorganic using an orchid that is already established. But let me show you 
the Dawiana. Before we do that, let's fill up the reservoir. Easy to forget. Now, in any case, with regards to a repot, no matter if you're transitioning or not, fill up the reservoir at least halfway, especially this time of year. You don't want it drowning again. So if I have a third of the pot as my deposit, and in semi-hydro, the holes would be up here, then I would fill the reservoir halfway this time of year. In the summer, no biggie, I would fill it up all the way. But not for this one, not for this time of year. And there we have it. Let me show you now the Dawiana. This is the one I repotted earlier than I said I would. I said I was going to wait for new roots and then repot. But in that video, I actually said why I was going to jump in and do it the, when I was going to do it instead of waiting for new roots. And I think that was like four weeks ago, maybe five. But you can see now it's doing fine. It's in a smaller pot than what I could pot it up in because I was replicating the bark environment. I used smaller media because the roots are small. And I am very lucky to have new roots growing now. Plus, the older roots are still absorbing water and greening up nicely. Root tips expanding. But what I do to maintain them just plain RO water. Today, it has seaweed in it for no reason, just because it has seaweed in it today. And because it's this time of year, I'm not putting a microfiber on it. I want these roots to stick around. So I'm just keeping it a little bit moist so there is no desiccation of the top leca beads on my root tips. And that's how I'm transitioning. Every third day, I flush with plain RO water. No fertilized water on the top, avoiding salt buildup and avoiding burning the new roots because they are not capable of taking in any of that fertilized water. Just plain RO water, and in my case today, seaweed. It's a growth hormone, activates any kind of growth in the orchids. And that would be the way I transition an orchid from organic into inorganic media. I was a little bit distracted because of some background noise, but I want to make sure that I've qualified everything that I've said. And I hope, Clarissa, that when you see this video, please don't hesitate to continue asking in the comments below. And anybody else that watches this video, obviously it's for everybody around. I just want to make sure that if I didn't finish a thought, there's no reason to then not ask again. I can have comments thread that are a mile long. I don't mind. As long as I can get the message across as to what I do, why I do it, and it's when I do it is when the orchid tells me and not the time of year. Then there are small little batches of adaptation depending on time of year. This orchid will now go inside and be a little bit more under a stable temperature environment. I hope, Clarissa, I did this justice. I look forward to hearing from you. Thank you for your request. Have a wonderful day. I will see you next time, I hope. Stay safe. Bye. <music>